Hey there, Uniwarriors. Ah, we got in here once again bringing you the latest in Uniwar action. Continuing on into the quarterfinals for the championship March 24 tournament, we have a matchup between Tadpole and Michael Cho. This is going to be quite a game, although I gotta say, Tadpole's got a huge hill to climb. Let's start by taking a look at his stats. He's no slouch coming from Canada, playing as number 40 on the championship ladder he's had a series of upsets in order to get this far in the tournament not someone who typically gets as far as the round of four uh more of a round of eight player but still someone who can do some damage and make some great moves uh, a newer player in terms of his tournament climb so he's he's a hungry player looking to make some waves let's see how he can do as he is continuing on he's he, he's definitely improved ranking number 17 uh was ranking number 52 on the 1v1 ladder so he's almost at that top 50 but wow does he have a monster to slay today ladies and gentlemen michael cho currently the number one ranked championship ladder player in the world and has been so since 2022 at the old and pretty much at the end of 2021 i have not seen a player dominate the ladder the way this player has february january september Crawl v. Crawl, Sapien v. Sapien, Titan v. Titan. This guy just couldn't... Look at all of these number one ribbons. We haven't had somebody who has dominated the leader since Phobos back in 2015. So if anybody is there to be dethroned, it's Michael Cho. You want to knock someone off the peg, this is the monster to slay. So can Tadpole pull an ultimate ed upset here? He's going to have quite a lot of work in front of him. Not that it's impossible, but he's going to have to pull out all the stops. Heavily favored to Michael Cho, but Tadpole, I'd love to see it happen. Always love a good upset. Again, the map is going to be played on Wide Valley version 3, 100 credits per base, initial credits of 0, and we are playing as a Crawl V Titan. So it's, sorry, Crawl V Sapien. So it's going to be all about control, control, control. Who can limit movement the best? And that's what this game is going to be all about. Without further ado, let's get the game started. Playing on the left-hand side as the Red Sapiens. It is going to be number one in the world, Michael Cho. And his opponent playing on the right-hand side as the Blue Crawlians. It will be from Canada, Tadpole. Let's get this game underway. So... Again, like I said, this is going to be a game about limiting the other player's options. And Michael Cho opting to go for a single marine build, but not going for a double marine build. I do see a triple underling open from Tadpole. Now here comes the double marauders out here, and Mike, Tadpole's got to be very careful. A salamander coming out here. That might push back that marauder for wanting to get that aggression. But it looks like he's going to try and snipe out an early underling kill and maintain that marine in the center mountain tile. And now the, the, the gauntlet's on Tadpole to make some damage happen. It looks like he's not going to want to allow that marine to sit there for too long, using that swarm and underling to clean up the center of the board. More swarmers coming up from Tadpole. Here comes Michael Cho, immediately trying to rotate these marauders in, get an additional underling kill, and he's going to try and be as economical as possible. If you give me a unit, I'm going to take a unit. Out comes the copter, pushing away underlings from that northern side, and now Michael Ch Tadpole is going to have to build a Garuda to try and deal with that issue. Those swarmers are not going to be enough by themselves. And a second copter coming out from Michael Cho, and this is looking a little dangerous. It's going to have to have a ha strong Garuda play. I do see double Garudas coming out here. So those copters opting not to want to push forward. Going to have to cover on top of that buried ling on the top. That Salamander making a push into the SWAT tile on the below. And now we see a northern versus southern hemisphere buildout. And now here comes that... Marauder going to try and snipe out that underling on the city tile and deny that additional income. Michael Cho taking 300 over 100 with a now the double cities versus no cities. This could be problematic. I do see the Infector 
being placed out here, and that's going to want that's going to keep any Marines from wanting to really put too close to that line. That copter is going to continue to play aggro. Is he going to maintain a base cap on the front? Base cap now from Michael Cho on that top space. Here come the copters here to aggro against these underlings, getting additional underling kills here. Michael Cho forcing Tadpole to have to try and play his hand if he wants to stay competitive in this game. And now Michael Cho sitting back, wanting to see how this is going. Here comes the Infector Plague spread. And now the Swarmer Stalamander Compton. And here comes the base capture attempt from Tadpole. And that is going to force a response from Michael Cho. And suddenly his attack on the north is going to have to be diverted. A double Infector coming out here. So now he is going to try and force these Marines to respond to them. Can these Marines deal with both these Infectors? And now that Copter to go to come down and get an insta-kill. Both the Infectors are immediately eliminated. That is a huge loss to Tadpole. And now these Marines are going to come up and mop up that second base cap. Another Swarmer kill coming from this Marine. This helicopter is going to be playing cleanup on these Swarmers. And with that Marine, it is going to be lights out for another Swarmer. Now we've got 1.6 over 200. There is a plague spreading through the ranks, though. Is that going to weaken this attack front? Boarfly getting a big four shot against that Marauder. Down goes the Marauder. And now these underlings are going to try and get big damage against this Marine line. The Garuda, which would like to hit that Copter, is going to have to deal with the Marine line in front of the Copter instead. We see more underlings being pumped out here to deal with this wall of Marine Copters. That copter eliminating that salamander. Can this marine and copter combo get a kill on that Garuda? Losing this Garuda would be huge right now. More aggression coming from these infect these these marines. The plague is slowing them down a bit, but not before they're able to get their major damage hits out. Another Garuda kill coming out from Michael Cho. Now 2.2 over 650. And Almost like that, almost all Garudas have been wiped off the board, with still four copters remaining in that space. These underlings are going to try and push that one Marine that's pushed itself a little bit too far, but that Marine has already done its job and made a blocking wall for the copter. And now it's a matter of delaying the inevitable. There's too much material loss, but perhaps it can push it back a number of rounds. That engineer on the bottom and now is going to get rid of almost all the plague amongst the ranks now. And it looks like we're going to have healing across the board. Almost all the plague is now gone. Cock is moving in to clean up what is on that bottom space. Marines pushing away. Whatever underlings got a little bit too far. Underlings going to have to retreat to that back line. More underlings out here. Just trying to get material on the board to make it a little bit more difficult for Michael Cho to make capture attempts. And now Michael Cho getting free shots against all these underlings with his copters. There is no air support here. Copter is now gone on that base. That base is left very exposed. Heels coming up on these Marines in the back. And what is the response from Tadpole here? Is he going to go for more underling builds? It's just trying to delay, delay, delay. He does have that under that buriedling come up and pop across that city tile. Is it going to be enough to divert attention for an additional round? I don't think so. I think that the I think it's not going to slow him down even for a round. And now these copters coming in are going to make big attacks against these Garudas and underlings. Uh, an additional Garuda, and now there is officially no more air support, just the boar fly in the back. That is simply not going to be enough. Underling dissolved, and it looks like that base has been negated. Boar fly going to take a big five shot, and here comes the base capture. There's no way to deflect that. Can he get an additional base cap on this turn? No, pull, opting to pull back that Marauder, get rid of that Link, and get a heal opportunity to that Marine on the city tile. More Marauders coming out here. And now here comes Tadpole. I don't think he has enough resources to be able to eliminate that base capture. However, he can do a bit of damage against the Marines around it. Out comes the Salamander. Maybe, to get, maybe he can get some Plague in here and slow things down. 
And with that gang up from that marine, from that marauder and copter, that base on the northern hemisphere has now been capped. Is he going to get an additional base capture, a double base capture on round 14? How many rounds can Tadpole hold out here? Cleaning up what's left. Here come the captures. Pushing up his final push. We are in the last stages of the end game. There are just copters everywhere. And there's the GG. Michael Cho taking the game in 15 rounds. And things spiraled out of control very quickly. On a map like this, Michael Cho did a great job of using these Marauders in early game to just get snipe kills against these underlings. Any underling that wanted that was brave enough to get exposed on this line across here just started getting sniped out and as this double helicopter comes in it forces tadpole to go for a heavy Mar garuda build and now he he's got the salamander down here he's got the garudas but with the sword of garuma comma it would have been stronger if he had been able to instead of be reactionary possibly get a garuda out in advance of the helicopters and have three garudas against that helicopter instead of Two Garudas, two Swarmers, I think. But, you know, hindsight 2020, it's a difficult conversation to have. And then as you continue along that line, Michael Cho just gets the opportunity to continue pumping out these helicopters. And with, with great economical use, he's just able to really call the pace. You see the Infectors come out here. Now, I don't think the game is still winnable at this position. I think where it be really starts to spiral out of control is at round 10 where Michael Toad takes an overwhelming lead at 1.6. But even here, there's some things that it, it, it may be possible to pull at least a, a longer round out of Tower Pole. But where things become a serious issue is when the double infector kill comes out. So this is where things become completely unmanageable. These infectors are hoping to grab some of these marines and leave these copters exposed without their protective wall. It's not a bad idea, but there's nothing to block these marines from coming in and getting these kills. And that's the issue. These, these infectors are just too exposed, and before they're able to put to any effect at all, it's just immediately 600 credits of material that is suddenly wasted and put to zero use whatsoever. And from here, Tadpole just does not have enough on the board to deal with anything that Michael Cho has to throw at him. So, it was a fun game to watch. A lot of, I thought this was also a great move right here where we had some excellent plague management. All of these plague heals came from that movement of the engineer, and now it's just a matter of leaning on your opponent. Well played. Congratulations, Michael Cho. Moving on into the semifinals. Thanks again for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Bang the bell button. And don't forget, I'll see you guys next time.